Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel for my sample playthrough of Iron and Oak. So what I've done is I've chosen one of the simpler and smaller scenarios in this game, um, mainly because I didn't want a torrent of scenario specific rules to obscure the basic mechanics of the gameplay. And I really wanted a good few turns just to show you the basics of how movement and combat works in this game, because at the end of the day, they are the core of the game. So the scenario that I've chosen is the famous duel between the Alabama and the Kearsarge, um, the Confederate and the Union ship, respectively, in the summer of 1864, which took place off Cherbourg, of all places. Um, the Alabama had put in there after a very successful run as a commerce raider, uh, but was finally run to ground by the U US warship uh, Kearsarge, which managed to sit off the port until Alabama tried to emerge and then very decisively um, fought her and sank her. So this scenario recreates um, Kearsarge's famous victory over the Alabama. I don't think I had a chance to really show you the entirety of the game board. I should, well, I say game board, it's actually a paper map, um, but quite a good quality one for all that. So essentially, the battle area is divided into the, this grid. <clears throat> you have your turn counter off to one side, your shoal markers, um, a few other boxes for wind and current. But in this scenario, the only environmental concern we have are the wind conditions, and it's fresh wind. This doesn't affect um, the movement of the ships in any real way, because we, we are, after all, dealing with ships that combine sail and steam power. Um, but it does have an impact in terms of clearing gun smoke if it happens. So there is Alabama down in that corner, and there is Kearsarge in the opposite corner. The victory conditions in this scenario are that whichever side strikes their colours or sinks or retreats off map is the loser and the other side is the winner by default. There's no turn limit so the two ships duke it out until one of those conditions are met. There are no special rules except that Alabama suffers from a penalty for defective ammunition. Every time she fires, there's a one, one in three chance that the shots may be less effective than normal. So it's not a major hobble, but it is a noticeable one. And just to give you a quick look at the ship cards before we start, as you can see, just by glancing at these, the two combatants are actually really quite evenly matched. They have the same number of hits, which equates to having equivalent hull strengths. They've got very similar crew sizes. Um, I think um, the Kearsarge has a very slight edge over the Alabama in that regard. Uh, in terms of their maneuverability, they're the same. Another area where the Kearsarge has an edge is in the slightly heavier armament, which included two 11-inch smoothbores, so she, she packed quite a punch. And she also had a somewhat better field of fire. Um, both ships can fire fully on the broadside, neither can fire out their sterns. Alabama cannot do a head fire, Kearsarge can at a rather heavy penalty of minus three. Uh, incidentally, both also have crack crews, which give them a firing bonus every time they employ their guns, but that's all a crack crew does. They don't assist with manoeuvrability at all. So there we are. That is the setup. <clears throat> now, of course, as I said previously uh, in the earlier video, this game can accommodate um, a much larger number of ships. But in this case, I'm only sticking to one aside to um, allow for allow for an easier, more streamlined gameplay for this demonstration. So other than that, that's the map set up. We have our two ship cards. We have the crack crew counters. Each ship has its own deck of um, orders and a starting hand as specified by the scenario of six cards um, from the action deck. The scenario is also specified that the USS Kearsarge will go first, so let's begin. So 
So following the sequence of play, there's an awful lot of items here. Um, but really, the status phase only comes into play once damage has been inflicted and repair parties prove necessary. So on the first turn, you don't worry so much about your status phase. There's no damage, there's no critical hits, there's no smoke to clear. So we'll go straight to the orders phase. And effectively, what this consists of is choosing an order for the ship, executing the order during the movement segment, and then if the combatants are in range, trying a bit of gunnery. Then there's the card replacement phase, and the turn then goes to the next player, who then plays through the same sequence. So looking at their options, gunnery range in this game is a maximum of, of long range, and long range is defined as two spaces away. Now these can be diagonal or orthogonal, so close and point-blank range are within the same grid square. Uh, medium range is adjacent ones, and long range is two away in any direction. Unless you occupy the same square or the same grid box, it's assumed that you've been able to bring your best side, in this case the broad side, to bear on the enemy. So, what are Kearsarge's options? She really wants to close the range, so all of the manoeuvre zero orders are not of any use to her this turn, because she really wants to get close to be able to employ her guns. So, so she is going to attempt a manoeuvre two. If she's successful, this will allow her to move two spaces. Now the way this works is you first consult your ship's manoeuvring um, state. So she's undamaged at the moment. There are no hits on her hull and no damage to her rigging and uh, propulsion systems. So what these numbers mean is that they, the US player would roll a 10-sided dice and a 6-sided dice. The Confederate player would counter by rolling the appropriate dice as given on the response chart. Now, the Kearsarge, by moving two spaces, is attempting to reach a non-adjacent grid box. That's what the GB is for. So what that means is the Confederate player rolls a ten-sided dice and a six-sided dice. So it's an identical roll-off, with a 50-50 chance of the Kearsarge being able to perform the manoeuvre. So let's see what happens. Kia Sarge is going to roll her d10 and her d6 first. She gets a 9. Now you don't add these numbers up. You choose the single highest number you've rolled and remember what it is. So Kia Sarge has her 9. That's going to be a tough one for the Confederates to beat. And the highest Confederate roll is a 7. So the Kia Sarge is successful and she makes her move. So when you move two spaces, when you successfully perform a manoeuvre two, you can move, one of the spaces can be a diagonal move, but the other one must be orthogonal. Um, also, in a more crowded scenario, you can never perform a diagonal move between two enemy ships. So had there been two Confederate ships in those spaces, Kearsarge would not be able to do this. But as it's nice empty sea, she can. And because it was a move two, she is going to move down there for the second part of her move. And so she's got herself a good position in the centre of the board, still out of gunnery range of the Confederate ship, but it's a good start. Um, and looking at her hand, There's some good cards in there. They don't really feel the need to discard and replace any because you can only do a discard and redraw three times in this game and you don't input in, in a game scenario and you don't get a chance to fill your hand up um, over the course of play as you do in many other games. So the US player is going to hang on to what he's got. So play now moves to the Alabama. 
And looking at her options, they're pretty much the same as that of the US ship. She needs to get into gunnery range in order to do something. So she is likewise going to play a Maneuver 2 card for her orders. And looking at her hand, there's not really anything that they can use at the moment, so they're going to leave that to one side as the US player did. Looking at Alabama's reference card, it's the same dice roll, a 10 and a 6, with the US player trying to oppose it with a 10 and a 6. So let's do Alabama's roll. They get a 4. The US... Ooh, get a 3 and a 1. So despite the low Confederate roll, the Alabama successfully performs the maneuver. So they decide they're going to go straight for it. So they make a diagonal move, and then they make an orthogonal move. So they're getting close. So that is medium range. And because they are now in range, the Confederates are going to take a shot. Now they have two cards that can aid them in firing. They have double charge, and they have rapid fire. Both of these have a very powerful effect, but as was the case historically, they're much more effective when you fire, when you use them at closer ranges. So as the range is only medium, the Alabama is going to hold on to these advantages and not play them just yet. But she is going to take her shot. So looking at the card again, she has a standard attack roll of an eight-sided dice. They're all nicely color-coded, by the way, so you know what to roll. According to the scenario rules, she has to include a white dice. On a one or two, the defective ammunition penalty kicks in. And lastly, a yellow dice is included. The yellow dice in this game are always location dice, so that you know where you've hit your target. So the dice have been gathered, and she's going to open fire. Okay, so her stronger roll is a 7. And now, what we have to do is go through a fairly lengthy list of modifiers <laughs> to see just what the final total is. So we started with a base value of 7. She has a... Um, she is at medium range, so there's no modifier. She has a standard rather than a limited armament. She has a crack crew, so it goes up to eight. And none of these other modifiers apply. So it's a total of eight, and she strikes the Kearsarge in location eight, which, looking at Kearsarge's card, is a waterline hit. That is not bad at all. So the Kearsarge now has to roll defensively. And of course the dice given there is the defensive rating. So the Kearsarge has to roll an eight-sided dice and at least match an eight to try and avoid damage. And they get a two. Oh dear, that's not a good result. So looking at the damage chart, we can see that the Kearsarge's waterline is a wooden location. There's no armoured locations on either of these ships. And the Confederate total was eight, the Union total was two. So the bad news is... Um, oh, actually... I just remembered the Confederates rolled a 1, so the Confederate total is actually 7 because of the defective ammunition. So it's not quite so bad for the Union, but it's still pretty bad because, as you can see, according to this, the result was still three times um, the, um, the, def the attack value was still three times the defensive value. So the Kearsarge takes two hits... And the shields, the intrinsic uh, hull protection, suffers a minus two penalty. And she also has to roll for a critical hit. That's painful. 
So at the very outset of the battle, the Confederates have scored a fairly major hit on their opponent. So the first thing I'm going to do is get one of these damage markers and place it on Kearsarge's card. The second step just move that over there. is to get one of these minus two shield tokens and place it on the location that was hit. So subsequent hits on her waterline will cause, uh, cause damage a bit more easily. Lastly, we have to roll this dratted critical hit for the poor old Kearsarge, so bringing that back. Critical hits are generated by the sum of two six-sided dice. And it was a um, it was a waterline hit, so we'll be referencing that column. So that's a five. Oh, all right. Uh, it's a hit on it's a hit on the ram. Okay. So what's effectively happened is that the Kearsarge has suffered structural damage to her bow, transmitted from the waterline hit. And going through the plethora of damage markers, critical hit damage markers, that is, I'll just find a ram one. There we go. Sorry, that took a bit of digging, but there is a ram hit. So it basically means, due to structural damage, the Kearsarge can no longer indulge in ramming attacks. To be honest, given that she doesn't have a purpose-built ram, I don't think the thought had crossed her captain's mind, except as a desperation measure. But what it means in practice is that now that's definitely not happening anyway. And there is one last thing to add insult, which is that if any hits are scored in a waterline location, it counts as an additional hit. And what that means in practice is that that hit marker has to go up to three. So just so you can see, at the end of the first round of Confederate firing, that's what Kearsarge's reference card looks like. She suffered three hits out of her total of 11, which is pretty major. Her, her bow, or in this case specifically her ability to ram another ship in safety, has been compromised. And her waterline amidships has been seriously weakened by the damage. So that is really not a good start for the Union side. And the Confederates can be very well pleased with that opener. And that is the Confederate turn. They're just going to have a quick look at their hand. Um, they have no intention of scuttling themselves, so they're actually thinking they might discard that card. It's placed face down next to their ship card. Um, and that's one way of keeping track of how many of the three discard and draws you've, um, you've used in a turn. You just create a small pile by your ship card. Ooh, and the replacement card is Grape Shot. Not that the Union player would know this at this stage, but his life potentially has just become a bit more miserable. So, play goes back to the USS Kearsarge, which is not a very happy ship at the moment. They could form repair parties at this stage, but there's no real benefit to doing so. Damage to the ram is not the sort of damage that you can repair, and hits and shield markers are not repairable in the context of an engagement. It's not something your crew can put right. 
um, and there's no smoke or anything like that. So they're going to go straight to the orders phase. Now they are quite desperate to close with the um, with the Alabama. They really want this to happen. They don't need to play a maneuver two. They could get away with playing a maneuver one, which is slightly easier to achieve. So that's what they're going to do just to close to, well, close range really is what they want. Now, because the ship has suffered three hits, she's perilously close to, go to dropping one level of maneuverability. But she has just about got enough structure, or is still structurally intact, to get away with rolling a ten-sided and a six-sided dice. And because they're only attempting to move to an adjacent grid box, the Confederates will oppose that roll with an eight, uh, an eight-sided dice and a six-sided dice. So the Kearsarge makes her roll first. Ooh, that's not good. And the Confederates will oppose it. Ooh, yes. The Kearsarge is trying her best, but for whatever reason, um, unfavorable winds, um, just the fact that her damage may be slowing her down, she doesn't make it this turn. However, she is able to open fire. Like the Confederates, she has a double charge card and a rapid fire card, but she's going to hang on to these until she can actually make it to close range. So she is simply going to employ the guns she has unmodified and have a go at the Confederate ship, see if she can exact some vengeance for what's happened. Now, as the combatants are a bit closer, I might just uh, bring the camera in a bit, just so you can all see what's going on. That's a little bit better. So the Kearsarge is shooting, and she's got an eight-sided dice and a six-sided dice. She's not going to deploy any of her special cards for this one. So making her roll, oh dear, the best she's got are twos there. And, oh, maybe I shouldn't have zoomed in quite so much. Well, take my word for it as I'm going down the modifiers list, because it's not, I'm afraid I keep knocking my camera stand if I try and wave this in front of you. Um, we are still at medium range. So she does have a crack crew, which raises it to three. But that's it. So she has struck the Alabama in Location 2 with a Strength 3 attack. Now, Location 2 on the Alabama is the bow. So she gets to roll an eight-sided dice. And she gets a three. So what that means in game terms is either the Union shots have missed or they've struck the hull ineffectively. So unfortunately for the Kearsarge, that did not go very well at all. Play now goes back to the Alabama. Do you know what? Actually, sorry guys, I might just zoom out a bit because it's nicer to be able to show you, show you more things and show you what's going on. Okay, so back to the Alabama. She's not been hit at all, not in any meaningful way. And there's no need for her to form any repa uh, repair parties or do anything like that. She too is quite eager to get to grips with the Union ship. She's already wounded her, so might as well close in and finish the job. And like the Union vessel, she only needs to um, achieve a manoeuvre of one. So she grabs her ten-sided and her six-sided dice. and makes her roll. 
Oh, she got a 10. This is not looking very good for the union. Um, the union player won't even bother rolling because the best he can do is get an 8. So all he can do is curse silently as the Alabama gets into close range and prepares to fire. So they have a lot of choice now. They've got grape shot, they've got double charge, they've got rapid fire. The Confederate decides rather than killing more Union sailors, he might capitalise on the damage he's already inflicted by double charging his guns. Bit risky because it can go wrong, but it does pack a punch. And looking quickly at his hand, the Union player doesn't actually have anything that he can counter that with, so he's just going to have to like it. So the Alabama's enthusiastic gun crews load. They include their penalty dice for defective ammo, and they open fire. OK, their stronger roll is a five, but there's no defective ammo. The double charge gives them a plus four bonus for short range fire. So five becomes nine. That was worth hanging on to. Um, the range is short, so it's 11. They have a crack crew, so it's 12. And thankfully the union the, for the Union, that's all they have to put up with. The bad news for them is the location roll was eight again. So once more, the poor waterline has been hit. So they get their defensive dice, which now suffers a minus two penalty because of the previous damage. And they roll a six. That's not too bad. So taking away the... Um, taking away Kearsarge's shield's damage at the waterline... That leaves them with four. Ah, that's not good news. That's still two to one in the Confederates favor rounded down. So. It's greater than double, but less than three times. So if it's minus one or more shields, which it is, that's another two hits. Oh, dear. So that takes the damage up to five. And just to make things worse, they. Um... Oh, no, that that doesn't apply because they already have a minus two. It, uh, it it's not cumulative. It doesn't build up. So the damage goes up to five. And in fact, it goes up to six because that was yet another successful waterline hit. So, yes, the poor old battered Kia Sarge is in a pretty bad way at the moment. So following that round of Confederate gunfire, you can see the hull damage is now up to six. Miraculously, crew casualties are negligible, but the next turn onwards, the ship's uh, manoeuvrability is going to drop to a ten-sided dice and a four-sided dice. Kearsarge, unfortunately for them, is in a lot of trouble. Um, the Confederates glance at their hand again, but they're still quite happy with everything they've got, so they're going to end their turn there. So, over to the Kearsarge. Now that she's in the same box as her opponent, what is she going to do? The Maneuver 1 and 2 cards are of less utility here. And she can't ram the ship because of the damage she's already suffered. However, she can try and cross the Confederate's T. Preferably across her, her stern. Um because giving her a good raking is probably the way forward. Now this time, the Kearsarge really, really wants this to happen. So they're going to play a quick manoeuvre card to give themselves a plus one dice roll modifier. 
Unfortunately for them, the Confederates are in a position to counter and they're going to play slow maneuver, which effectively cancels out the advantage that uh, quick maneuver gave the Union ship. So those two cards go away. And the Kearsarge has to make her roll with no support. So in her damaged state, it's a 10-sided dice and a 4-sided dice. They've effectively used D8s with the numbers doubled. So let's see what she gets.